Fournette. Fournette goes airborne. He's in. Touchdown, Jaguars. Tip and intercepted by Ramsey to close it out. It's over. The Jacksonville Jaguars have pulled off the upset of the playoffs. What is going on, everybody? It is Drew from Dream Talks, and we're back here on the grind of making videos. And this week, it is a must-win for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, it seems like we've been saying this each and every week uh, since we have lost three to four in a row. But right now, we are tied for last in the AFC South with these guys, the Indianapolis Colts. And in order for us to rise up and make a comeback, we need to win this game. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Trey from Troop Talks, and this is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Indianapolis Colts week number 10 preview. All right, so first and foremost, let's discuss the offense. I fully expect this game to be low scoring. Like, I'm talking like 19 to 17, 20 to 10, something like that. Uh, both these, the Colts defense isn't terrific by any stretch of the imagination, but the Jaguar offense is struggling. So the Colts defense might just have a uh, great day, you know, one for the books uh, as far as the season goes. And this Colts offense, I think uh, the Jaguar defense matches up well uh, against this Colts offense. And I hope, I hope they do. Because there's been some situations where I thought we matched up well defensively this season. And we got killed. Example being the Dallas game. Example being the Titans game. Um, <clears throat> but this week is a week that I think we should match up well. And be able to win a lot of the matchups as far as the uh, defense against the Colts offense is concerned. However, we're going to start things off with talking about the Jaguar offense. Let's address the obvious thing that I think a lot of people should be excited about. Leonard Fournette is supposed to be returning this week. Now, a lot of people have been calling Leonard Fournette a bust. They've been saying, why didn't the Jaguars draft Patrick Mahomes instead? Why they Or Deshaun Watson, why did they draft, you know, Leonard Fournette? Before injuries, Leonard Fournette is 100% what this offense is built around. And I think that's what a lot of people forget about. Um, heading into the season... Everybody, you know, and their moms was hoping that Leonard Fournette was going to stay healthy. And this is what the offense was going to be built around. Last year, we didn't go this long uh, without Leonard Fournette. And it was kind of okay in those times because we were able to do, you know, people were able to do their job as far as the offensive side of the ball goes to make plays uh, during the absence of Leonard Fournette. However, we have not been able to do that uh, this year because we've lost him for an even, you know, a longer period of time than we had him gone last year so I think with him coming back that's huge for the offense I know everybody's gonna directly say oh he's gonna be facing seven eight man boxes this guy is elite he's a good running back a great running back and you know facing those bo those boxes and I think that this offensive line is built more for a run uh, first style of an offensive line so I think that with Leonard Fournette coming back with a three-headed monster that not a lot of band you know no one obviously Saw coming for the Jaguars here in 2018 with Leonard Fournette, Carlos Hyde, and TJ Yeldon. Um, that's a crazy three three man uh, stretch there, and I'm hoping we run the ball minimum 30 times. I'm hoping that this is just a ground and pound uh, style that we're going to be running with Leonard Fournette, Carlos Hyde, TJ Yeldon. Uh, obviously, Leonard Fournette's going to go out there and get the start, and you would think TJ Yeldon's probably going to play the third down back kind of role because he knows the system more, but we need to get Carlos Hyde uh, involved. That was an investment that we made via trade to the Browns, and we can't just have the guy on the roster uh, and have him not do anything, which is what he did his first game uh, against the Eagles, only getting, I believe, six carries, so... With that being said, this run game is going to be huge in the Jaguars' uh, success heading into this game against the Indianapolis Colts. Now I have a big, bold prediction now because of how he's been playing recently, but I think Blake finally bounces back this week. I think with the addition back of Leonard Fournette with the stout run game that now we are going to have with Leonard and Carlos, and you know, people are probably going to be like, do you really think Leonard Fournette makes that much of a difference? And I 110% really think Leonard Fournette makes that difference um, because Blake isn't going to have to throw the ball 40, 45 times in a game, you know, because we can lean back on Leonard Fournette uh, with the combination of Carlos Hyde and TJ Yeldon. The difference is when we just have TJ Yeldon and Carlos Hyde, we don't have a bell cow running back, at least 
I think Carlos Hyde could be that guy, but I guess the Jaguars didn't. But Leonard Fournette is that guy. He's the bell cow, take the body blows type of running back. And I think that giving that to Blake Bortles is going to, you know, he's going to improve. I think he's going to have a decent game throwing the ball against his Colts secondary. As for the wide receivers, just catch the ball, please. Literally, like, I'm not going to say Blake Bortles' completion percentage is fucked all because of drops, but there have been a lot of drops this year. We have the... I think as a team, we are second or third in the league in drops. We have the number one wide receiver in drops with Keelan Cole. And hopefully Keelan just does not even find his way onto the field. You know, uh, D.D. Westbrook, D.J. Chark, uh, Dante Moncrief, those guys are all three that I would take over Keelan Cole, at least as the time, as the as of now. So, you know, I think Blake Bortles is going to be able to bounce back, have a solid game if these receivers are also able to catch the ball. Combine that with a stout run game, and this is the Jaguar offense that we had uh, the first couple of weeks. I know we didn't have Leonard Fournette for week two, but, you know, this is the offense that we need. We need a stout run game and be able to uh, throw the ball when we need to. Keyword, when we need to. And let's play to Blake Bortles' strengths, and that's another thing we didn't do a lot of on the first half of the season is play the Blake strengths you know we kind of just made him throw routes he wasn't comfortable doing you know that he's not great at doing them you didn't really there's not there wasn't a lot of rollout stuff where he was able to get out of the pocket and uh hopefully Nathaniel Hackett you know with Leonard Fournette back in we can get the play action game going where he's very effective and uh hopefully we can also do some rollout things uh, in order for Blake Bortles to really bounce back this week and have a big game uh, against the Indianapolis Colts, so we are not last in the division. Like, that's going to be hard. If we lose to the Colts, we are last place in the AFC South. And who saw that coming after the 2017 campaign? Not me, not any of the fans, not any of the players, you know. So, this is the bounce back week, and I think that this is going to be big for momentum's sake uh, later on in the season. Because in November, we have a slate of a lot of easy games. Of course, our game against the Steelers the week following this one got flexed out of Sunday Night Football, which I personally think is a good thing for two reasons. One, a little superstition reason. I think since 2014, I've seen Big Ben as 14-3 and three in primetime games. So it's a good thing, I guess, because, you know, he has that good of a winning record uh, being 14-3 and three in primetime games. But... Also, because I think the Jaguars play better with a chip on their shoulder. When the when we feel like the league is disrespecting us, I think that's when we play the hardest. And that's kind of what all of 2017 was. And, you know, coming around to 2018, everybody knew this Jaguar team. We didn't really have that chip on our shoulder. But I think with them taking away Sunday Night Football for us, it puts that chip back on our shoulder in order to really go out there and improve and really dominate. Because, you know, they feel like we're not worthy of that time slot. So... Like I said, let's go out there, let's win some games. It starts here uh, with the Colts. So that's what we talked about offensively. Defensively, let's get some sacks. Uh, the Jaguars are the highest uh, QB pressuring team in the league with 36.6%. Personally, could not have told you that. Seen that stat today on Twitter. Um, so, you know, it's we haven't had a lot of sacks. I believe Clayus Campbell and Yannick Ngakwe both have five apiece which leads the team, and that's terrific and all. But, you know, we need more sacks. This Colts offensive line, though it's kind of finding its footing here uh, later in the season, I think this defensive line matches up well with the Colts offensive line. And we need to be able to get into Andrew Luck's face because Andrew Luck has been the Colts' saving grace this season. We need to get into his face and be able to pressure him, hit him, hit him, make him hit the ground so many times, like, like, like have him... You know, pick him up so he could be like, nice sack, bro. You know, I want us to get at least eight nice, nice sacks, you know, uh, from Calais, uh, from Andrew Luck. Because, you know, he's just that type of guy to pick you up. And I say, you know what I'm talking about. You know who Andrew Luck is. You know what his game is all about, obviously. So, with that being said, we need to get into Andrew Luck's face, be able to cause some pressure, and be able to uh, get after it. Same thing with turnovers and defensive touchdowns i really the jaguars only have one defensive touchdown this season which is nothing compared to the amount of defensive touchdowns that they had last year so this is when we really need to start turning the juices on on defense 
and be able to get, you know, a defensive touchdown. Whether that be from Jalen Ramsey, Miles Jack, Tevin Smith, whether it's a young guy like Ronnie Harrison, you know, let's see somebody go out there and make a play and score a touchdown on the defensive side of the ball to be able to get us that two possession lead. Because I think if one of these teams takes a two possession lead, they're good. I'd say, like, if the Colts take a two possession lead on us, they're definitely good. I don't know, because Andrew Luck is really good at making comebacks, but I think if the Jaguar get, Jaguars get that two possession lead, I think they could burn the clock down and be able to, you know, bounce, bounce back and finally win a game for the first time in four weeks. Now, finally, these are two, three, and five teams going at it to not be last in the division. For the Jaguars, I'm hoping that this is the start of the bounce back, the bounce back tour. Because, you know, we got Pittsburgh, Buffalo, Indy again, Tennessee, Washington, Miami, and Houston. That's an easy stretch. I've said since the beginning, since the schedules came out, the second half of the season is going to be the easy part of the season. The first half was the hard part. Unfortunately, we came out of it 3-5. and five. But I think with the matchups we have coming down the stretch, we are able to come back. And I'm hoping, you know, we got to hope for Houston to take a fall. You know, in there somewhere, we also got to hope we beat Tennessee at least once, which that's a tall ask for this job war team. There's a lot of things that need to happen, but in no way, shape, or form should we be giving up. This is the start of the Jaguars comeback season. Let's get it. Jaguars need to win this game. And that was my Jacksonville Jaguars versus Indianapolis Colts week number 10 preview. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to check the links down below as well. Don't forget to like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Trevon Pixley and follow me on Instagram at Trayvon Pixley. And if you are feeling oh so generous, don't forget you can donate on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Troop Talks. Also, if you haven't yet, click that subscribe button. Click the bell icon. So you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new Jaguar content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them's just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.